Hello and welcome to KURE Sports on ISU TV, the first ever edition of this new show. I'm Taylor Mankel here broadcasting with Matt Barker and Michael Mainzer here. Two guys from KURE Sports over to ISU TV. Barker's got a little experience. Of course. Michael, brand new, green, ready to throw you into the fire. So, what are we going to start with? First, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what this show is going to be from week in to week out. We're going to bring in a bunch of different faces from KURE Sports, combine them with ISU TV presence, get a whole different look on all things sports. That's right, all things sports. We like to spotlight on Iowa State, and that's what we're going to start with here today. We're starting off with Iowa State men's basketball. Because this is our first edition of this show, let's look back and give me one of your biggest takeaways this season thus far. We'll start off with Michael. What's one of your biggest takeaways? Uh, the thing I'm going to start with is probably going to be the Oklahoma win, and I can sure. kind of sprinkle in the Kansas one a little bit as well. And the reason I say that is that we've had a pretty negative season so far. But at the end of the day, we've seen Iowa State go out and mostly at home beat top teams. And when it comes to March, you know that they have the capability to do that. So I think that type of game is one that you want to look at and say, hey, when we're at our best basketball and we have all the guys, McKay included, and we're playing well, we can beat a team like Oklahoma who's always be talked about as one of the number one teams. I agree. I, I totally agree, especially with that Oklahoma point. That is the game because they didn't have any points coming off the bench in that game. They barely had any minutes coming off the bench in that game. They still won against the number one team in the nation. Granted, it was at Hilton, but I think that really shows the presence that Iowa State can have on any given night. Granted, they're not the best team in the nation most of the time, but they can be one of the best teams in the nation on any given sure. night. What's one of your biggest takeaways from the season as a whole thus far, Barker? Uh, just the surprising kind of the thing that that's happened in the past couple of weeks with Jamil McKay. Uh, oh, yeah. There's a lot of things that, I mean, he can bring to the table, but it shows that Iowa State without him is a problem. I mean, he, he's had so many issues with uh, tweeting, Instagram, and whatever, just off – off the court issues mm -hmm. and just what he, what he brings to this to this team and as a body I mean just to start with I mean he's he's six foot eleven I believe six foot ten give yeah, or take yeah. uh, he just stands in the lane and he he can block shots or just get shots altered that don't go in normally or that would go in normally uh, it's just his type of body is not normally found at Iowa State I mean sure. he's, he's the first he's the first person of this that I've seen watching this Iowa generation State, yeah, yeah. Of, yeah. This, of this Iowa State generation to watch that's been well over six foot eight six foot nine mm. and it, it's it's troubling to see because he he has potential just you don't know how far he will take sure it. sure and uh, let's take that opportunity to kind of talk about Iowa State in general starting off with the offensive side Iowa State's offense granted they're not near the top of the rankings where they were earlier, but that offense is one of the most dominant in the nation. Ken Palm has them as one of the most dominant offenses in the whole world, basically. So what do you think this offense has to do? Do they have to overcompensate because of the lack of defense, or can that offense be enough with the slim defensive presence that they have. Start off with you, Barker. Uh, well, the defense obviously is going to have to improve. Uh, the offense, you, you're, I mean, it, it's shown in the past. Uh, we've seen with just uh, numerous trips to the NCAA tournament that defense is going to win them games. Mm -hmm. uh, the past two or three, two or three years are prime examples. It's just they give sure. up, they give up more points. I mean, you're going to lose. Your offense can only do so much. Mm -hmm. uh, and putting up 90, 90 points, I mean, sometimes is enough. Is some most of the time going to be enough? Just in the tournament, you're not going to put up 90 points. So yeah. to, if you want to win that, and we've heard Monte Moore say multiple times he wants to win a championship. If they're going to do that, they need to play defense. Yeah, and we even heard it after last game. Monte was saying after that last loss against West Virginia yeah. how they're playing for seeding now. Mm -hmm. They're playing for the tournament. They're playing for the future. Mm -hmm. Instead of playing to finish off this season, they know the Big 12 regular season is out the door. So uh, let's switch it over to defense while we go to you, Michael. Talk a little bit about the defense of Iowa State, where they need to improve, where maybe they have some good points. Tell us about that defense. Yeah, well, I mean, we know Iowa State, they – they never foul, and at times that can be kind of a bad thing, but at the same time, that's kind of what Prome and what Hoiberg preach is 
stay in front of your man, but they haven't really been doing that so far. I like Halas Cook a lot. I know you did a little bit. I think yeah, he could yeah. get a little bit more minutes. But for the most part, you have guys like Thomas and Morris who basically just need to be more aggressive. I think yeah. that if they foul a little bit more and send teams to the free throw line, that's okay because they're still going to be playing that fast pace and it might get teams out of the rhythm. Because, like you mentioned, with the way their offense is playing, they can make a run, but for them to get all the way, they need their defense to step up. I agree. I think a big wild card to that is Abdul Nader. He's had times where his defense has been very good. Same thing with Matt Thomas. Matt Thomas had one of the best defensive performances against Buddy Heal, the best player in the nation, when they played Oklahoma at Iowa State. But since then, it's kind of died off. He hasn't had that same energy that we saw a lot earlier. All right, let's go on to the next one. We mentioned it briefly, West Virginia loss. It was a pretty pretty bad loss. I mean, you saw an Iowa State team that you normally don't see just as going to contradict what you were saying, Michael, they fouled. They fouled quite a bit. They fouled to a point where they couldn't come back from that. So uh, what was kind of your biggest takeaway from this game in Morgantown? I mean, you mentioned Abdel Nader had an, a phenomenal game. He did, yeah. And Nian and Morris still stepped up. Basically, everybody filled the stat sheet, but it came down to the defense, giving up 97 points. Oof. And you, you really can't allow that. And I think that's one of the things that West Virginia does is they full court press, they get you out of your rhythm. And one of the things that I would take away from this game is I want Monte Morris to be more aggressive. His assisted turnover ratio hovers around four or five for the last couple seasons, and mm -hmm. everybody talks about how amazing it is. And I think that he could be more aggressive and turn the ball over a little bit more if we're compensating and getting more buckets out of it. Yeah, Monte Morris is a huge part of this team. I think uh, obviously you saw it more in the beginning part of the season where he was making those clutch shots, putting himself in those clutch scenarios. Sadly, Iowa State has needed a lot of that this year. All games seem to be close, especially in the Big 12. You haven't seen that aggressiveness as of late. I agree with you, Michael. I think he's kind of dialed it back on his shot. You saw him taking more mid-range shots and even some three-pointers mm -hmm. a couple games ago, but he's kind of died off here recently. I like that going back to that. What do you think, Barker, as specific to this West Virginia loss? Uh, the fouls. I mean, mm -hmm. every, every single player that played above probably six or seven minutes had two or three two yeah. nader had two fouls the rest had three or more mm -hmm. uh and we had two people foul out with mckay and uh uh george niang i mean niang fouled out in a frustration obviously yeah, but yeah. uh not taking not trying to take away from your point just foul foul to the point where it, it's smart yeah, yeah, you, yeah there are smart fouls there's smart there. fouls and that, that's it just you, you need to play better defense mm -hmm. and that, that's all it came down to is just play smart defense without fouling uh i would like to see george nia not pick up that first foul in the first two minutes yeah, uh yeah. that's happened in i think i've counted eight games now so and i've been sure. counting for god knows how long <laughs> I, i've just every time I, I look at the score sheet he has a foul within the first two minutes of the game uh i would like to see him stop doing that um or at least him mm -hmm. not being the first one sure him being the leader of the team uh yeah, that's that. I mean, just the, just keep the fouling to a yeah. to a smart foul. There are a lot of stupid fouls yeah, out there, especially yeah. in that West Virginia game. They they seem to get Iowa State seemed to get frustrated against that press, as many teams do. But Iowa State could not stay above that. I think George Niang was probably the predecessor of the stupid foul in that game. Granted, a lot of people are complaining. A lot of Cyclone Nation is complaining that the the refereeing of that game yeah. was not up to par. I don't like to give him that. No. I don't like to give him that. I think there was way too many. Both ways, yeah, I think there are way too many stupid fouls for you to be considered that uh, blaming it on the referees. So let's go down a little more to specifics before we take our first break here. Uh, what or who, I should say, is the most crucial Iowa State player coming down the stretch? Give me a name, Barker. Monte. Monte? Tell yeah. us about him. Uh, I mean, Michael hit it on hit it on the head there earlier. I mean, he's got to be more aggressive. Uh, he only had four assists in the uh, West Virginia game. Uh, that, that's not enough. I mean, he's got to he's yeah. got to do more. Uh, Monte, I, I think he he's a greater player than what what most people give him off to be. I mean, he's obviously already a national name. Than, uh, One of the best point guards I, in the nation. I mean, yeah. he's already got that national attention. He's just he, he's got to be better. Uh, I, I don't know, and I, I don't, maybe that's just me being too hard on him or. A lot of people being too hard. Well, we've seen the thing is, yeah, we've, yeah, we've seen, seen the potential. Yeah, just, we've seen it. Exactly. It's just, I, I don't think I think he can score over 20 points a game, and I still think Iowa State would okay. win. Okay, Michael, I'm gonna disagree a little bit, and the Not reason so fast. I, <laughs> okay. I don't, I don't think fine. it's Monte or Niang because yeah. 
Like we yeah. mentioned always, how far are you going to go in the tournament? Sure. Both of them need to play well, and they need a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Because if so Morrison, they're going to get theirs. I think Morrison Yang, they should yeah. always, get theirs. Yeah. And you need a guy like Nader or Burton. Okay. I'll go with Burton because I think Nader, I think Nader's a little bit better than Burton. That might be a bold prediction. I don't know. I think he's more developed. He's yeah. more developed yeah. right now. He's, yes. He's been yeah. with them a little bit longer. Sure. And so I think I'm going to go with Burton because. Mm -hmm. We've seen that he can kind of do it by himself a little bit, provide us an offensive spark, and defensively he's probably our biggest, strongest defender alongside Nader. Sure. So Burton and Nader are kind of my two X factors to help alongside Morris and Nader. Yeah, Burton's a, he's an interesting case to mm -hmm. say the least. He's on and off, he's hot and cold, but I think Iowa State needs to give him those opportunities to become hot because he has some offensive presence and on the defensive side, I think each game you've seen improvement. Each game you've seen improvement from him. Uh, Let's see who I'll give it to. Hallis Cook. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Oh my God. Hallis Cook is not getting time, and that's a that's I a different like that, story though. for that's a that's a story it's for the next episode. Too bad. But uh, I think I'm gonna give it to Nader though. Okay. Nader, ha when he's on his game, Iowa State is usually the team that ends up on top. Granted, the one exception to that was against West Virginia and Morgantown. Mm -hmm. He had a fantastic game. Even kept the fouls in control. That was pr possibly the most controlled I've seen Abdul Nader all season. Mm -hmm. But they could not make it up with other players like Niang and Morris, like you think Iowa State fans should be able to bank on. But and I think let's not give zero love to McKay. We sure. still do That's need McKay. Yeah, I was yeah. Say, I was mm -hmm. say, he, we, he no can be an expert for all. sure, for sure. So. But I think Nader, he has that presence. He's a he's a mismatch nightmare, mm -hmm. absolutely for any defense. And I think he will be huge coming down the stretch for the Iowa State Cyclones. I think that this season's going to come down to something weird. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know how the Big 12 tourney's going to go. I, just real quick, a couple seconds. Where do you think Iowa State finishes in the Big 12 tourney? Real quick. I think they lose in the finals. Lose in the finals? Barker? Lose in the first round. First round? Yeah. First round. Who do they lose to? I don't know. I, I haven't looked at the bracket. <laughs> uh, uh, probably West Virginia. I think yeah. they'll play West Virginia. Who? Yeah, that's a tough game. It happens. Yeah, well, it would be the second round. Second round, then. Sorry. Would second they lose round. on Wednesday? <laughs> yeah, they'd lose on Wednesday. So there Wednesday, that would mean they were, they would have to drop a couple games here if they lost on Wednesday. That's fine. Jeez. Rest up. Jeez. Rest, Rest up. up. All right, all right. I'm, uh, I think they'll get to at least the semifinals. I'm not sure if they can make it to the finals this year. And I don't know if that would be the best thing for them. Maybe I don't should either. rest a little bit, mm -hmm. but that's another, que that's another question <laughs> that we don't have time to get to. We're going to take a quick break here on KURE Sports. We'll be back with NCAA men's basketball on KURE Sports on ISU TV. Welcome back to KUORI Sports on ISU TV. I'm Taylor Manko along with Michael Mainzer and Matt Barker here on our first show ever. Hopefully it's going good. Glad you could tune in. All right, so now we're going to talk a little NCAA men's basketball. We're going to start off with what I think is a pretty easy question. 
<laughs> but some disagree with me, but we're going to go into it anyways. In your opinion, which conference is the best in the nation in NCAA college basketball? Right. I'll start off with Barker. We got. 12. Okay. I'm not going to go. You're I'm not, not going to go against I'm not gonna, I'm not going to go that. Uh, the Big 12. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you have Oklahoma at three, Kansas at two. I mean, you, you have at least five, five of the ten teams, maybe more that I'm just counting off the top of my head, that have that are in the top 25. It, it, it's just, and they're beating up all on each other. Yeah, so I think, yeah. I think just the way that this season has been, it, it's obvious that the Big 12 is, is the best conference in the nation right now. Uh, everyone, everyone seems to be, be beating up on each other. Uh, not one team has lost to another team, or every team has lost to another team, whether it be there or or at home. Mm. It's mm. just, it's an unreal season. Not one team will, in my opinion, will come out to be. I I won't even say that they will be the overall number one. Even if they win the conference, I still don't think they're the best team in the Big Twelve. I don't think there is one this year. So you don't think Kansas is, a, is no. at top right now? Mm -mm. You don't? You no. don't? Blow, you don't buy that? I think that? they could. I think they could lose in the Big, just like they did last year. Well, in the tourney, but they still probably. Get the one. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I still <laughs> fine. don't think they're the best team in the Big 12. Okay, okay. Michael, what do you think? I think that Kansas and Oklahoma kind of hover as the top two teams for me. I'm going to go with the Big 12 as well, which leads me to a question. We could say, what is the second best conference? That yeah, that's best probably best. a better question, probably, actually. Yeah, if we all uh, Well, let's, let's dive into that. What is the second best conference in the Big 12? I, 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 oh, well, boy. it's got to be the ACC. I think you could argue oh, that boy. the Big 10. Oh boy! No, you, I think you just hate the Big Ten. No, you Bro, tell they're, they're just back deep. Up. Back it up. Back here it up. We go. Who we got? Who we got in the Big Ten? I mean, like, there's not the powerhouses, but you have Iowa, you have Maryland, you have Michigan State. Come on, Come on. Maryland. 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 They're not that just bad. Lost, lost to you Minnesota. You have to throw Iowa in there Minnesota. too. Minnesota. I don't like Wisconsin. Iowa, but like they're pretty good. No, they're pretty oh good. God. Doesn't make the Big Ten the second best conference in the nation. That's ridiculous. Maryland has been just dropping off the map here recently. Michigan State wasn't good to start the season. Those losses prove that. Iowa, come on, you've seen Iowa's schedule. You know that's true. Michael will give me that one. <laughs> who else they got? Yeah, who else you got? Indiana. <laughs> Indiana's is a decent team. Indiana's not that bad. No, Purdue. Indiana's not that bad. Indiana might be the best team in the Big Ten. Purdue. Which is not good for the Big Ten. Purdue has been not great recently. <laughs> I mean, come on, come on. Big Ten. I'm just throwing it out there. I, I think Big I Ten is Big the Ten. worst conference in college basketball. The worst. The worst. They're worse than the, the SEC. SEC. Yeah, I think they are. I think they're worse than the Pac-12. I don't think they're worse than the Pac-12. I think they're worse than the Pac-12. Pac-12 has a heavy top. You know, you got Oregon, Oregon, Arizona, yep. even though they just lost. I'll give you that. Uh, you've got USC Utah. up there. You've got Utah up there. You've got Washington. Oh my God! You throwing your Washington in there? Washington's not having a terrible season. <laughs> no, Washington no. State is one of the I, worst yeah, college basketball yeah, yeah, teams yeah, yeah, in the nation, yeah. but Washington's not terrible. Oregon State's not the worst. They're not Big Ten worst. Do uh, you think that the Big Ten will have the least amount? Because you think they're the worst amount of teams making no. past the first round of the tournament? No, I don't. Because Michigan State always finds a way, and they're 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 one team that's almost a given. And mm -hmm. uh, Big Ten, you know, they always find a way to show up in the in the big tourney. I don't know how. But they find a way. I don't know if it's. I don't think it's because they're good. I think it's because the matchups they draw. I truly do believe that. All right. All right. Let's move on to something else because <laughs> that's a ridiculous topic. So, uh, just last night, three ranked teams lost. Another three ranked teams go down. One of them, it was against a ranked opponent. So Xavier beating Villanova, Big East matchup, a huge matchup. In fact, what does this say about the Musketeers of Xavier? I think that better team. Go on. <laughs> Sorry. Really? Um, Go on. <laughs> well, I mean, you look at the Big East. It's just them two at the top all year. Yeah. And Had Providence for a while, but they've yeah. fallen off. Yeah. And so it's kind of like their only test that they can really get against sure. each other. And I really liked Villanova. I like Jalen Brunson. He's a point guard who came in, and we know that they have other weapons. And so, I don't know. It's kind of one of those Kansas-Oklahoma things where they're battling against each other, but when it gets to the tournament, they're not going to be playing each other until yeah. maybe the yeah. very end. Probably not. No, probably not. What do you think about that win from Xavier? I, I I mean, it's it's at home, so yeah. give them that. So mm -hmm. give them this five point spread on that. So they they won by seven. It, it's a good win for Xavier. I mean, they're mm -hmm. they're the fifth team in the nation, uh, and they should. I mean, if they're the fifth team in the nation, I think that's just kind of like Iowa State too. They they should be able to beat anyone at home. Uh, I think I think Villanova is quite possibly 
the second or third most well-rounded team, but I don't think they're the best team. Uh, oh, like I said, like I've said before, okay. with, even in the Big Twelve, I still don't think that there's a number one team in the nation right All now. Right. All right, let's go to the Pac-12. Colorado against Arizona. That was a big upset for Colorado. Big mm -hmm. W. Even bolsters Iowa State's resume a little it bit. It does. Just uh, bad. Do you think they're not bad either? They're twenty and nine. They're not bad. They're not bad. Twenty nine. They, they have twenty wins. I don't think I'd consider them a tourney team. Though. They're on the bubble. Yeah, they are on the bubble. That's true, but nice I, I don't think in. they're making it in. I don't think oh. they're making it in. But regardless, Dang. big win for Buffalo. Colorado and bad loss for Arizona at the wrong mm -hmm. time. Arizona was streaking going into this game. They were on. They were on a pretty good run here. So, what did you guys think? Was this more Colorado's doing or Arizona's downfall? Because Arizona defense that you normally see in Pac-12 action didn't really show up against the Buffaloes. Yeah, I think it was kind of more of an Arizona downfall. You know, last year they were one of those favorites as a two seed to be picked yeah. as a title winner, and they're always known for their pack line defense, kind of like Virginia. So a team like that, I wouldn't hang my head too low because you know that when it's defense, you're usually going to get things fixed and you're going to get back on track. But it still is a bright spot for Colorado to beat a team like Arizona. Sure, sure. What do you think, Barker? Uh, I think it just helps it helps bolster uh, Colorado's uh, they needed to win that. They I did mean, need that, a big I win. mean that yeah. that helps them be more of uh, a lot for for the tournament. I mean that that's just I mean that's just kind of showing and proving my point more of that there's no safe team this year. There's not mm -hmm. a number one. There's not a number two. There's maybe not even number three best team. And there's obviously not a, not a great Arizona team this year. Uh, well, excuse me. They're they're a great great team. Just that no team is safe this year. And that the even though that Arizona will did lose to Colorado last night. Uh, I think Arizona will, will still go further in the tournament because they've been there before. I just, I don't think, I just, in my opinion, I just think it helps Colorado more. Okay, okay. Now let's go to the last one. One made Iowa. me giddy. Iowa lost to Wisconsin. Uh, remind me, was this in Carver? Yes, it was. Yes, it was, <laughs> Iowa. What a terrible home court <laughs> advantage. I'm sorry, but, uh, to be honest, Wisconsin had been playing well recently. They've been playing pretty decently, but was this more an Iowa loss or a Wisconsin win? Who do you think took this game? There's always that question about these I, upsets. I think it's more of a Wisconsin win, and with this mm -hmm. Wisconsin team, we know what they went through at the beginning of the season with yeah. Ryan and everything, but there's still a team I'm worried about. You mentioned the Big Ten always finds a way, sure. and that's kind of the way with Wisconsin. And when you look at Iowa, the way they played at the beginning of the season, you mentioned they had an easy schedule, but mm -hmm. I feel like they were a strong team. So it's definitely not something for Wisconsin where you're like, oh, this was nothing. This is definitely a big win for Wisconsin to yeah. hopefully gain some momentum and get themselves back mm -hmm. to where they're used to being. Yeah. Any time. yeah, it hurt me to say it, but it was a good win for Wisconsin. It wasn't really Iowa just blowing this one up. Wisconsin had a good game. They played well. They finished the game, which was huge. Yeah, they had they a did. lead pretty early in that second half, and they finished the game. They were able mm -hmm. to finish the game in Iowa City. That was a pretty big deal for Wisconsin, and I think it will be a pretty big deal for them in the future. What did you think, real quick, about yeah, this? Yeah, Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin won it. I mean, it was just it was a hard, it was a more hard, hard fought game than I thought it would be. I thought mm -hmm. Iowa would have would have maybe cut it to like a four point loss or like a three point loss, but I, I thought Wisconsin, like you said, uh, they. They finished the game. They had a lead throughout the second half that they kept, and they maintained it, and they, they did a good job sure, of closing out sure. at Carver Hawkeye Arena. All right. We're going to move on to some postseason talk, obviously. We're not there yet, but we're going to discuss a couple things. First, we're going to get our dark horses from all three of us, and then we're going to get our final four picks, so dropping all kinds of knowledge for you here on KUR Sports on ISU TV. First off, let's start out with the dark horse. Somebody who you think could make some moves in the tourney, but obviously isn't a favorite going in. We'll start off with you, Michael. I liked yours. Who do you got? I've got the Wichita State Shockers, okay. and they've got the experience. They've got two guards who have been there before, mm -hmm. and we mentioned three years ago, obviously their team's changed a little bit, but they, were, they made that crazy Final Four run. The yeah. absence of Clanthony early does hurt a little bit. They're not as athletic anymore, but they currently have the second best defense in the nation, and you might say, oh, their strength of schedule is terrible, but when it comes to the tournament, you're going to be playing a bunch of teams that you may not have played at the, in the regular season at all, so it's about preparing for mm -hmm. new teams, and I think that that is something that this Shockers team can do. They've had three straight years, no first-round exits. I think they can maybe make a run, so that's why they're my dark horse. Yeah, that's a good one. They, they've they got the Missouri Valley basically wrapped yeah. up at this mm -hmm. point, so the spot is definitely there for them if they're willing to take it, and they've had a lot of improvement from from the beginning of the season. Obviously, Van Fleet was out for a while. That mm -hmm. hurt them. They lost a couple games early, but they've been really turning it around. I think 
Uh, Baker needs to step it up a little more, but I do think Wichita State yeah. is, once again, another team that's always looked at as a pretty important Cinderella, if you will, in the tournament. And you mentioned Van Fleet went down. Mm -hmm. One of the other things about them, they're, I believe it is three and four with their injuries, but when their whole team is healthy, they're 18 and three. So it's a bright spot for them. Yeah, absolutely. Who do you have, Barker? UConn. UConn. Uh, I just, UConn has, I mean, it's a big way name back, for a dark horse. Way, I know it is. Uh, I mean, way back when they won their national championship, they they were they weren't. I mean, they weren't. They weren't. They were not favored to win. No, they weren't. So, right now their RPI is ranked 39, as you can see on the graphic. Uh, mm -hmm. They did defeat a Big 12 team. They did. They did. They did on the road mm -hmm. and by a sizable eight or nine. It was a so, pretty good win, yeah. And the thing I like most, and we've talked about this on the radio show. That's mm -hmm. tomorrow. Uh, we can pregame. Tune yep, in. Yep. Uh, depth. depth. They have nine players depth on the nine. roster right now with ten minutes or more, Whew. and they use it very, very, very well. Uh, I think that depth is going to happen in, in March. I mean, it's when you need it. Yeah, exactly. You need it. You're playing games every two days, and then you get a break, mm -hmm. or every every other day. Excuse me. Yeah, every two days then. <laughs> uh, you you just need you need that depth to solidify, and they're playing well as a team all nine of them together right now. So I sure. think I think when it comes to March, that if they have that solidified even better and they, they haven't lost to a team by more than 10 yet, I think they'll be a good team. And I think, they're, I think they have a, a good chance of going pretty deep in the tournament. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. I'm going to go with somebody who's really, really dark, a dark horse. I'm going to go with Oakland. Uh, the Golden Grizzlies, <laughs> Oakland, the Golden Grizzlies. They're a good team. You can bash me for the Big Ten. I can bash for picking. You can Oakland. try, but they have one <laughs> of the best point guards in the nation in Felder. He averages about 24 points a game, almost 10 assists per game. They've got two Iowa State names, if you guys remember. Sharon Dorsey Walker's on that squad, and Percy Gibson's on that squad. Percy Gibson. Percy Gibson. He's I not as slow anymore while he's on the yeah, Golden speedy. Grizzlies. He's not as slow. I'm not going to call him speedy, but he's not as slow. I think they can make a run in the Horizon Tournament. I think that's where they need to get it done. If they can get a run going in the tourney. Uh, they're a decent team, and I think they can make a bunch of teams lose. I mean, they, they played Michigan State very well uh, earlier in the season. Granted, Valentine was on the bench during that game for Michigan State, but they still played a very good game, and I like this team. I like what they bring in the backcourt. All right. Before we take it to break, let's get our final four picks in. First off, let's start with Michael. Who are your final four picks? All right, I've got the two that I've mentioned a decent amount so far. It's mm -hmm. Kansas and Oklahoma. I think they're both pretty solid. They've, they've got the resume, everything like that. I'm going to go with Virginia. Just a, a strong defensive team. I sure. See, uh, I'm not sure if you like that one. Um, <laughs> And then I'm going to go also in Virginia, West Virginia. I mean, watching the game against Iowa State obviously made me think more about them. They've beaten us twice. But just the way that they play their full-court press defense, it just it gets teams out of the rhythm. We saw VCU a couple years ago kind of just make that run yeah. because teams yeah. aren't used to it. And I think that's one of the things in the tournament that can really help out a team. Three Big 12. Three I'm Big worried. 12 teams. I, I I'm worried for it, you. I, I love picking like that. I like it. I'm, but I'm it worried. never happens. It I'm worried never for happens. Uh, I'll go next. My final four. I, I've got a couple in there that are similar to you. I've got Kansas in my final four, and then I follow it up with Oklahoma. I've got two Big 12 teams versus your four. Uh, I've also got excuse, three, oh. excuse me. I've also got a Big oh, wow. 10 team. Surprise, surprise. I've got a Big 10 team in my final four. Like I said, Michigan State, they find a way. Tom Izzo always finds a way to get into the Final Four. I think it's looking more and more like that. The more they play, the better they play. And then, to round it off, I was really impressed with the W against Villanova at home. I'm going to give it to Xavier. Big East is a up-and-coming league. They're, they're, they're having a they're very good bounced year. The first round. They're going to get bounced in the first <laughs> round. This is not going to be a first-round bus. I promise you that. I think they will make a great run in this tournament. I think they can be a Final Four team. Okay. Go ahead, Barker. Uh, I had Kansas. And okay. I mean, per usual, I mean, they're premier yeah, team. Sadly, pretty good. Oklahoma. Uh, uh -huh. And then I need to I need a refresher real quick. I can't we remember. We always talk there about how Duke. there's no top team. There it is. Duke, Duke was my third one. Yep. Duke? Duke, yep. Duke? Wait, come on. You can't never, you can never, you can never bet against Coach K. Sure you Ever. can. Sure you can. No, you cannot. They were just out of the top 25 a couple and weeks ago. And look where they are now. Yeah? Look where yeah. they are now. Getting the Duke treatment. Uh-huh. And yeah. then... <laughs> My other dark horse, Come on. Wisconsin. Okay. I picked a Big Ten team, but this is ridiculous. Wisconsin? Yeah, that's ridiculous. Not ridiculous Come at all. On. 
get out we'll of watch. town. Just get we'll, out we'll, town. Yeah. we'll wait and see. We'll wait and see. But first, we're going to take a break here on KURE Sports on ISU TV. We'll be back with NBA talk. I don't play this game to lose and live like life on the line. A really pretty price was paid for mine. One of a kind, different design. Working, I'm certain you'll see it in time. I gotta shine, so you'll be fine in the nighttime. Let me link you up with the life. Now, Jesus, babies is toting heaters. The enemies trying to beat us. Dirty died, deceivers. Lions fight, the truths. Blood sucking mosquitoes get swatted. That's it, defeat us. Victory is the sweetest. Crunch time was a beat. Welcome back to KUORI Sports on ISU TV. I'm Taylor Mankel, joined by Matt Barker and Michael Mainzer. Now time to talk a little NBA. The association, as some call it. The association. <laughs> You're it's an association, one. Barker. So let's take it to the association. Mm -hmm. Matt Barker, what's your biggest takeaway of the whole season? Because this is our first show. Like this one. Yeah, I probably yeah, will. Let's are. hear it. It's going to be super easy and super blunt. Okay. The Warriors are good. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. The Warriors, just... We're, we're witnessing history. Yeah, I uh, thought you were going to go a different way. I'll, I'll go that way. No, Keep going. The Warriors are good. I mean, wow. What, what, can, what else can you not say about the Warriors? Yeah, it's one of the best teams of all time. That's, of all that's time. past debate yeah. now. Yeah. So we'll get into, and five we'll get into that later. Because you picked sure. the Warriors, we'll talk about that a little later. Go on. Uh, Michael, what's your biggest takeaway of this season? I mean, it is the Warriors. Minus the Warriors. But minus them, I'm going to probably go with the San Antonio Spurs because they're getting no credit. But sure. if the Warriors didn't exist right now, the Spurs would be talked Huge about story. as one of the no, <laughs> as one of the best teams like almost ever because their point differential is hovering around 13. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's I think yeah, top 10 true. of all time. And like we mentioned, they're going to be facing the Warriors if it didn't, if it isn't for the Thunder in those yeah. Western Conference Finals, and that will probably be better than the NBA Finals. Yeah, I agree. That'll be a that'll, that'll be, be a fun. very good matchup. That'll be very fun. Granted, when the Warriors did play the Spurs thus far this year, it hasn't been much fireworks. But hopefully, hopefully in a seven-game series, they can make something happen. Uh, the takeaway that I thought you were going to go <laughs> as a Lakers fan over here, I thought oh, he was the Lakers go, suck. The Lakers yeah, are the too. worst team. <laughs> no, I wasn't going to go that. They're route. almost as bad as Jake Stevens. If you have watched ISU team Seventy Sixers. By the way, but uh, almost, almost. I mean, it's it's the Lakers, then 50 feet of dirt, and then the 76ers. By the way, if you're wondering, the expertise here of KUORI Sports on ISU TV got to bring you the realest of the real. So. Oh, man. That's my biggest takeaway of the season. The Lakers are terrible, and I think it's bad for basketball when the Lakers are bad. I it really is. do. It really is. Ratings one of the most major markets. Yeah, it's one of the biggest markets in all Every, of sports, everything. All yeah, of sports. Everything. So I think that they need to get better pretty soon. But you mentioned well, the Warriors, Kobe. Barkers. So <laughs> let's jump into it. We're currently 51 in 5. Mm -hmm. And uh, apparently there's a 44% chance to hit 73 wins, according to. 538. So, do you guys think they're going to make it? I oh mean, boy. yeah, I do. You said 51 and 5. That means yeah. they need to go 
if my math is correct, 21 and 5. Fast math just for a to, just, just to match, Very fast. Just to match the 72 fast. and 10. So they need to go 22 and 4. Yeah. They're 51 and 5, and now they need to go 22 and 4. Yeah. And with the That's way they're good. playing, the only way they're losing is by Damian Lillard, which we'll get to in a minute, yeah. mm -hmm. going absolutely off. The way the Warriors are playing this year, and I've watched basketball for years, I usually just watch the Bulls and the big games. Ugh. I will go and watch other Warriors games just to see them it's play. It's entertaining stuff. Because the way Steph Curry and their offense just moves around, it's sure. so entertaining to watch. And it's defenses can't stop it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I would want to agree with you if this was before the All-Star break. But from what I've seen after the All-Star break, Slump. they've had three or four really close games. Slump. And normally, if you were a true normal team, not a superstar team like the Warriors. Those would be losses, but they are the Warriors, so they're squeaking out those W's. Mm -hmm. But I think they're not going to get there. I've seen what they've done recently, and I think that teams are playing them how – it wasn't just Damian Lillard in that Portland mm -hmm. game. The defense that they put against Steph Curry was huge in that game. Granted, he still dropped 30-plus points, but he's going to do that on every single night. I think that defenses are starting to figure out how to – contain Curry, and once you do that, you contain his assist factor too, and that draws in, of course, the other splash brother, Clay Thompson, uh, Green in the post, obviously he's been good all year, Andre Iguodala. Once you do that, you have chances to beat this team, and I think those chances are only rising the more games they play. What do you no think, Parker? love for the No love for the Iowa kid? Come nah, on, Harrison nah, Barnes? No nah. love for him? No love. Oh, he's no gonna love. Get, you know he's going to get paid this year. He, yeah, he is, yeah. especially because uh, the cap's going up. Yeah, I know. Uh, I think they're they're in a struggle with it. I'm not. I'm gonna say they will, but I think they're only going to beat it by a game. One I, game. I think they're going it's to come down to the last and game. And one of their losses, beater. the so. one of these losses is going to come this week. Or yeah, really? this week. Okay. The Thunder. They play the Thunder twice in one week. Yeah, and they play the Thunder. They yeah. play the Spurs, Spurs. So that is one. And then the they next one, they're it. gonna. You know what? They're gonna they're gonna fall to the Thunder, and then they're gonna lose to the Lakers. <laughs> come on. Come on! Is, is it going to be because of Kobe? Kobe's or is going to drop 82. 82 to beat his 81. <laughs> He's going to drop 82. He's going to shoot every shot. And they're going to beat the Warriors. Uh -huh. Is that at the Oracle Arena or is that at Staples Center? It is at the Oracle Arena. I don't oh, think Kobe's man. dropping <laughs> more than 30. That's a hot take here on the No, I lied. I'm sorry. It's at, it's at Staples Center. It's I at lied. Staples? Yeah, okay. it's at Staples. Okay. Gives hope. them a slimmer of hope. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know. If you look at the Lakers' record, they're so bad, they could have a better record on the road. Yeah, they could. I? According, I mean, to, I according to 538, we mentioned, what was it, 44%? 44%. What does Kobe shoot for each basket? Like 35%? 40, 42? No, he's like 36. No, it's, it's yeah. like 35, yeah. 36. Yeah, he's, he's so, pretty bad right now. So currently, the Warriors have a better oh, well. chance of beating the record of best record of all time. Mm -hmm. More than, more than, than Kobe, Kobe shooting, a making a, shot. sometimes an open J. It's okay. <laughs> so there you go. And we mentioned we're going to talk about Damian Lillard. He has mm -hmm. been on fire recently, absolutely tearing up the NBA, especially showcased in that game against the Warriors. Was this due to the fact that he was snubbed for the All-Star game? Absolutely. It's, it's kind of a weird thought. You think absolutely? Yeah. And it, it shouldn't be because there shouldn't be an extra motivation just for him to go out and play this well, because he should be trying to do this every single night. But I'm not gonna take anything away from him because they were ranked 28th, right next to our beloved 76ers and Lakers in the preseason. And now they've moved all the way up to 10th in the power rankings, that's the one that ESPN gives. Sure. And they're battling in the Western Conference mm -hmm with basically just Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum. So you have to give credit to, to Damian Lillard, the way he's playing. And he's kind of taken some plays out of Steph Curry's playbook, just pull up threes, which are now apparently an okay shot in the yeah. NBA yeah. Yeah. and stuff like that. So yeah, for, watching the Trailblazers, they're becoming a new and upcoming team. Not real, for Greg Popovich though. Yeah, Don't real, do that with Greg. Real uh, quick, Barker, what do you think about Lillard's play recently? Uh, I, I'm, impre I'm impressed with it, obviously. Yeah, I just, yeah. going, going quick into that game, the third quarter, 17 points. They held Golden State to 17 That's points. That's that defense I, I was think that about, yeah. defense really, really, what the, if they play just a minimum amount of defense and hold them to 20, 17 points, 20 points in a quarter, I think they have the mm -hmm. good, very good chance of winning. All right. Before we go to a break, we've got a couple more minutes here. Let's talk about final predictions. Mm -hmm. A bunch of people have the same thing. <laughs> and uh, I try to go against the grain. I'll go first here because uh, I know... It's, it's a long shot here. It's a long shot for my prediction, but I didn't want to go with the cookie cutter way. I'm also a Toronto Raptors fan, so my final prediction, yeah, it's a little biased, <laughs> so I'll give you that. The Toronto Raptors against the Golden State Warriors. I think that brings up the good question, is there any way that the uh, Warriors in the West don't make the finals, or is there any way that the 
Cavaliers in the East don't make the finals. I think I think that there's a better chance that the Cavs get knocked off than the Warriors. I Even agree. though the Warriors I are agree. the Spurs oh, and the Thunder, I, I think the Warriors oh. are playing that well. And I don't think it's that far-fetched. That you, I'll give your Raptors some credit. I know, Besides right? the Bulls, who <laughs> I wish would be consistent, Dude, it's done. the Raptors are the best team in the East. <laughs> By far. And then, obviously, the Cleveland. Yeah. So if Cleveland does have a couple bad games, the Raptors can maybe go in and take it. It's really just them. The Celtics aren't that great. And I think, good. I think it's huge because the defense of the Raptors is what has been so great all year. Dwayne Casey finally being able to implement that defense on the Raptors side. He came over from the Dallas Mavericks as the defensive coordinator. They wanted to bring the defense that they had in Dallas over to Toronto. They're starting to do that. Better. They've had injuries all year, and yet they're still the second best team in the East. Damari Carroll has sat more games than he's played. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Well, coming up on even for Valanchunas, mm -hmm. he was hurt early with that hand injury. I think this team has the potential to knock off the Cavs on that east side. And like you said, on the west, I don't even think that, I don't think the Spurs have a chance to knock off the Warriors. But I'll, give I, a, I, I'll give them a chance. Yeah, okay, you know, just a smart what do you think guy. they'll go to seven? How many games do you think they'll go I think they, well, they have to get through the Thunder first. Yeah, That's exactly. The I think okay. the Thunder have a better okay. chance of knocking off the Warriors. The Warriors. Okay. 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 Though, because of the okay. athleticism? Because of the athleticism and the offensive firepower that just keeps up with them. Because mm -hmm. I don't... They Deep. played them like two weeks ago. They almost did it. Yeah, they, they did. did. They did. Right. I think they did. They've got a, a similar kind of offense can propel you to victories mentality over an OKC mm -hmm. rather than the Spurs where they go a lot more fundamentals and whatnot. I don't think that's enough against this high power team. What do you we'll think, get a, Well, I mean, we'll get to talk about that in, uh, in a week. I mean, yeah. they play them twice. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I'll be watching both of those. I mean, that's that's going to be a fun sure. game. Uh, the, I picked the Warriors and the Cavs. Just, yeah. uh, Surprise. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> I just I think that they, the Cavs just if they want to and if they want it they they can do whatever they want. LeBron can get his his whenever he wants. Uh, it all comes down comes down to how how well LeBron's going to take them and just like how well and their how, role players. Yeah, how, if they show up. Sure, sure. Uh, Kevin Love's got to got to play better. Mm -hmm. I mean, he just I think the Cavs should be able to. It's just how how far the role players can take sure. them. Yep. All right, we're going to take a quick break here on KURE Sports on ISU TV. We'll be back with some football, here we not go. the American kind, after this. I see your dirty face high behind your collar. What is done in vain? Truth is hard to swallow, so you pray to God to justify the way. Welcome back to KURE Sports on ISU TV. I'm Taylor Mankel, and there are two different people here. Surprise, surprise, we've got Andreas Afar. He's a part of KURE Sports and ISU TV. We've got Laurel Feek. She's just part of ISU TV. So the partnership oh. is truly meshing. Oh. It's truly becoming a real thing. This is the immersion. It is all is immersion, the immersion because we're talking <laughs> a very popular sport, but not in America. This is football. 
increasingly popular in America, maybe, <laughs> but, it's, but not, yeah, it's uh, not even the top increasing. No, but it's 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 in there. We've got respect for it right here on absolutely, Sports absolutely. on ISU TV. So, Andreas, give me the big top. Let's do it. Let's do it. Champions League, mm -hmm. biggest champ, uh, biggest tournament in all of Europe. Yeah. Best clubs. Uh, and it's obvious. We got to start with Arsenal, Barcelona. Got it. I mean, they. That's that's a Titanic clash. It Tuesday is. was Titanic. Had Juventus and Bayern, but. Arsenal and Barcelona, they went at it toe-to-toe. -to -toe. It was a great match, great entertainment, a lot of chances. And well, Messi, of course, world's best player. No one's surprised Messi that he stole Messi. the show. Messi played like Messi, and, and you know, he, he scored. He never scored against Arsenal goalkeeper Petr Cech, but then he did it twice to uh, in the second half to, to give to Barcelona. To him. Just to be like, look. Just to throw it in his face. To stick it to him. They don't <laughs> give you the best player in the world award just because, you know, check it out, check. I mean, it was, one was a penalty, and we know he didn't pass it this yeah, time, yeah. As, as happened before. But I mean, it, it was, it's so unfortunate for Arsenal because they always get either Bayern Munich or Barcelona in, draws, this, yeah. in this, and they're like, well, I think we're good enough. And it's like, well, how good? You know, Not build build it up. Good. And I just think uh, you, you come Messi, Neymar, Suarez, best three, be, the triple threat, the mm. best in the world uh, yeah. when it comes to offense. It's hard. It's hard to beat. So they take two away goals, and they're going to go to the Camp Nou, yeah. uh, which it's that's a fortress right there. That's going to be tough for Arsenal. Yeah. Uphill, very uphill on like a very, I don't know, six-gear bike. I don't so, know. So answer me this. <laughs> both, both of you, answer me this. Uh, Barcelona, well, can they be beaten? In this tournament, can they be caught up to who and beaten? Possibly. Um, who by? Bayern Munich, you know, people are going to be like, okay, here's this typical answer. <laughs> Bayern Munich and Real Madrid, <laughs> they're the big two, of course. They, I think they can do But there are also teams that it depends on the form. That, like in the form they're in now, in La Liga, yeah. where they're just they're about to run away with, with the entire thing. Um, I would say no, but Bayern Munich, close. Because okay. Bayern Munich is also very tough in the Bundesliga. Um, I would say they, they would be the closest because Real Madrid are struggling right now somewhat, you know, compared to their standards. But, yeah, maybe Bayern Munich. And you speak of Bayern Munich. Mm -hmm. They just played. Yeah, you went to some Bayern Munich without it 2-2 the same day. Great match as well. Mm -hmm. Bayern went up 2-0. And yeah. then uh, Juventus equalized through, through a sub. And then Dybala, he's awesome, awesome player that they bought over the summer. Great player um, to have up front and tied 2-2. And then just to, you know, mention Dynamo Kiev and Manchester City, they went at it. Manchester City won three one away, so that's I mean they're virtually one step, one foot in the door, and say okay we're on to the next round, which is good because they usually come up against a Bayern or a um, or a Barcelona too, so that's kind of unfortunate. And PSV Eindhoven and Atletico Madrid, maybe this isn't why soccer's popular, but uh, it was nil nil, <laughs> and so uh, and people are like they can tie, yes, yeah. <laughs> and this suits Atletico and they're going to return the Vicente called around, see what happens. Now my favorite match. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. A different competition. Oh, of course. It was my, well, it was my favorite. Here it yeah. comes. Uh, <laughs> it was West Ham. No, I'm just kidding. It was, <laughs> it was uh, Liverpool, Augsburg. They went. Uh, it was no, no, the first leg. Second leg, they come in. They go to Anfield. They score very early on through a penalty. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, from, from what I was hearing, because I was listening to it, uh, as opposed to watching it, um, it was very end to end, but Liverpool just keep giving up these mm. stupid passes and giving them chances, and that's my team for that's you guys. How you really <laughs> feel, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, yo, they just keep the fans on the edge. So that that happened. And Manchester United, they survived a scare against a Danish team. Now I'm gonna say it right, FC Mid Thailand. That it's it's got more letters than I thought. They 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 lost oh, they lost two one last time out over in Denmark, and then they won five one. Uh, Manchester United won five one. Helped them so much mm. today. But uh, let's get to the international scene. Yeah, let's do it. The Copa America Centenario, Centenario, rather. <sighs> group of death, what do you guys think? I, I'll, I'll go through the groups. Yeah. Group A, USA, Colombia, Costa Rica, Paraguay. Mm -hmm. Group B, Brazil, Ecuador, Haiti, Peru. Then we have Group C, Mexico, Uruguay, Jamaica, and Venezuela. And Group D, Argentina, Chile, Panama, Bolivia. Hit me. I, th I think the easy one is Group A. I the think just... Because the easy group of death? Of, yeah, easily okay. picked for the group of death would be Group A. I think just because of the depth, we talked a little bit about on the on the clones right. on here on Tuesday on KURE Sports. Check it out, 7 to 9. <laughs> but it's just the depth of Group A. Uh, you got USA, Colombia, Costa Rica, Paraguay. Those are all yeah. above average teams. Yeah. And the thing is, with the group of death, I think 
every matchup you play is going to be a matchup that's yep. potential loss, potential loss right there mm -hmm. in every single matchup. I think a bunch of these other ones, like you look at Group B, Brazil, Ecuador, kind of top, top heavy. heavy. Top like heavy, like you said. Yep. You've got a couple top heavy. Peru is okay, but Haiti, I, um, yeah. I feel it. Good luck, guys. I mean, yeah. I, I hope. It'd same, be thing, nice. same thing in Group D, Argentina, Chile, mm -hmm. uh, kind of the top heavy, bottom half, Panama, Bolivia, not right. so when we much. Go, and when we go to CONCACAF, the, the North American, and then we go to CONCACAF, the South American, there's a big gap yeah. in, in talent. Mm -hmm. Huge. I mean, as you can see, the top, those top nations there, Uruguay's tough too, even in Group C. And Mexico's also tough, but Venezuela is maybe better than Jamaica. I don't know. What do you think, Laurel? Honestly, group of death. Between Group A and Group D, Okay. Is, is, is where I would put it. Okay. Um, you know, of course, I would love to root for the U.S., but they are in against Colombia. I mean, I feel and like, I just, the, yeah. I, I don't see them coming out on top, <laughs> to be honest with you. Okay. okay. You don't like America, huh? No, I'm just no. kidding. Somebody That's hates the narrative. America. <laughs> That's the narrative. It's always group of death, but I think in the World Cup and then this one, it is applicable. Yeah, this yeah. is group of death this time. Before, they're like, oh, group of death, just to, I don't know, we talked about it. Get ratings or yeah. you know, watch it, and they do better than people thought. Well, maybe they downplayed it. I don't know. Yeah. But okay. qualify for the for the women's team to the a, women's a, a more hopeful squad. Yeah. I, I want to yes. do this. Yeah, yes. Pretty hopeful squad there. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I mean they're the world's they're the world champions. They're number one. They you know mm -hmm. winning the World Cup over the summer. Um, no big deal, right? <laughs> well it's just, it's just a, a, it's a small thing. It's like that happens lowest every... of a low trophy you know yeah. <laughs> that you can really win. Right. Um buy it no. off the shelf. Yeah. It's like a ninety nine cent trophy. Right? Sure, but anyway, sure. you know, so CONCACAF Olympic qualifying. Mm -hmm. US women's national team they're going. <laughs> they're uh, going. They are, there. They are going. They're, they're going. going to Rio. Um, but you know, Canada's also going. They played. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, Canada and the U.S. played in the final. Um, That's right. U.S. ended up winning 2-0. Uh, Lindsay Horan had a nasty, it nasty was... nutmeg on the sideline. Oh. It was beautiful. <laughs> I wish we had the video. Um, I know, but oh, still. Gosh, it was beautiful. I'm getting goosebumps thinking about that one. Um, but you know, both teams actually qualified in the semifinals. U.S. against Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, five to zero. That's an easy one. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. it's the same. I mean, I'm sure you'll talk about oh, another nation you know, in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico, <laughs> they are just they're rough. I, I, I feel bad for them. I, I, I mean, you gotta be honest. honest. I feel bad for them, um, but you know, the the level of women's soccer has just dramatically improved, mm -hmm. and that's really making the U.S. team really have to work that much harder. Sure. Mexico, they were not ready for that. They've totally no. won on a technicality. Yep, I saw that game, and that was yeah, that was something. That was that was a that dirty was one. A, I mean, I wouldn't say dirty. That was a. It was not, not a great call. Yeah. The ball didn't change in the direction. You know, the, the handball. Mm -hmm. mm. It was. Carly it was, Lloyd. I mean, that goalie. She almost had mm -hmm. it. Carly Lloyd, if she wasn't calm and you know the FIFA World Player of the Year. Yeah. Maybe I feel like the Mexican maybe wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. have gotten that. The Mexican know. defenders could have maybe came and helped the goalkeeper too, but I mean, she she just kind of dove and. Couldn't get the set, the rebound, if you will, and they were yeah. just kind of maybe like, oh, I don't know what happened. Usually, you expect your defenders to go in there and clear it out, and be on, you know, be on their game, you know, because she did her part for the most for the most part. And but you know, Carly Lloyd trains for exactly that situation. Mm -hmm. That's you know, when she posts videos yep. on Instagram, that's all you yep. ever see is just her constantly one on one. But um, really, the the player of the tournament for me was Crystal Dunn, scoring that's five right. goals. What do you even call that? What do you call that? That's not a half. That's like, what do you call that's that? You're, you're, you're two and two thirds. <laughs> no, it's one and one third of a, yeah, I don't know anymore. I mean, she, <laughs> Almost two hat tricks. She, she and uh, Sedeno Rodriguez from Costa Rica, mm -hmm. top goal scorers, mm -hmm. uh, six each. And, you know, but the U.S. is looking to nab their fourth straight Olympic gold medal oh, in that's Rio. That's so good. And, go, on, and, go ahead, I'm sorry. Going into Rio, I was just wondering, obviously, United States, top of their game, they're, they're the people to be in this, correct? Mm -hmm. right. So who do you think, if you were to name one or a couple oh, mere contenders that two. could knock off the United States? Just in two Rio? mere contenders. Just two. Um, maybe three. Uh, okay. <laughs> I would have to go with Germany and Paris. Sure. They were amazing in the World Cup this summer. And I mean, Canada, we'll put Canada in there only because neighbors to the north, we always we have that rivalry. <laughs> um, but well, yeah. I really, honestly, even though Germany lost Celia Sausage, right, retired they're still going to be mm -hmm. Yeah, amazing. they're tough. And the, the French, they were in the semifinals too, no? The French? Oh, yeah. Or were they? They were. They, they did well in the World Cup, the last World Cup as well. I know that. Yes. And so they're still pretty and tough, And honestly, right? even though England had that, you know, devast 
devastating yeah. own goal. <laughs> oh my gosh, watching that, that live was, was the worst. To watch, yeah. um, still. I mean, maybe England will just be like, this is our this is our round two. Well, that's <laughs> England for you. England has some, it's a golden year, and then every time there's a huge that, has, that was the farthest they'd ever made it in the World Cup tournament for the women's team. Really? Yeah. Wow. Really? I didn't know that. I didn't either. Mm-hmm. That's so, so maybe they're coming. Maybe they're so. Maybe you know. I wouldn't put England up there not to, not go, to go win. To go there. win Rio. Um, yeah. But definitely between U.S., Germany, and France. Okay. Definitely. All right. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, guys. You just of enlightened course. the world with some football knowledge, both men's and women's. We appreciate it, and we thank you for tuning in to KUR Sports on ISU TV today. First. Little plugs here towards the end. I'm going to do it. <laughs> KURA Sports on Twitter. Give us a follow. Make sure to check out all of our stuff there. You can go over to our website, KURE885.org. Head over to the sports page. We've got good articles on there. And, of course, listen to our shows on the radio. We've got Sunday. It's the Sunday breakdown from 12 to 2. Monday is the sports view from 3 to 5. Tuesday is the clone zone from 7 to 9. Wednesday is the show with no name from 7 to 9. Yes, that is the name. Thursday, <laughs> we've got... The Sound of the Storm, that is from 12 to 2 as well. Friday, we've got the weekend pregame to round off your radio fix. All of that is on 88.5 FM or on our website as well. Thank you again for tuning in, and we'll see you next week.